Hi, I'm Paul Bertarelli, editor of Aviation Consumer Magazine. Welcome to our continuing series on aviation products and services. You know, at Aviation Consumer, we test all kinds of aviation products, but I'd guess we get more requests to report on traffic systems of various kinds than any other type of product. For whatever reason, pilots worry a lot about mid-air collisions, and lots of owners are willing to pay for a set of electronic eyeballs. You can easily spend $20,000 or more for a full-up active traffic system, and at those kinds of prices, it's no surprise that a lively market in portable traffic devices has developed. So in this short video, we'll take a look at some of these products. These gadgets aren't huge sellers, by the way. They're not quite like portable GPS, but they're still price and feature competition. So let's take a look at the offerings here on the ground first, then we'll follow up with a flight trial. There are currently four okay. portable traffic devices on the market. All of these products are basically passive transponder listeners, which means they listen for transponder returns of nearby airplanes and then try to determine how far away those airplanes actually are. These two are made by a company called Zeon, which has evolved from an earlier company called SureCheck. They're one of the first companies to offer portable traffic equipment. They call these devices PCAS for Portable Collision Avoidance Systems. This model is the Zeon XRX, and it's the most sophisticated and expensive on the market. It sells for $1,785 typically, which is fairly pricey, we think. So, so what do you get for that amount of money? The XRX is the only portable capable of showing both range and azimuth, and it can track and display multiple targets. It has a small LCD display that points in the direction of the detected traffic. The XRX has audio alerts, which you can hear by plugging a headset into this audio jack or wiring the device into an aircraft audio panel. This jack is an RS-232 port, which accommodates a, a feature Xeon just introduced, which is the ability to display traffic on a Garmin 396 or some of the PDA-based portable navigators. We didn't have time to test this feature, but we plan to look at it in the future. At the opposite end of the spectrum is this product, which is the Xeon MRX. Of the four, it's the only one that will operate both on internal batteries and ship's power, so it's the most portable. It sells for $489, and for that price, we found it to be a pretty good performer. It has three range settings, five miles, three miles, and 1.5 miles, and it also has a built-in altimeter, so if it can't receive altitude data from your onboard transponder, it can still display relative altitude and trends. The batteries are behind this little door on the bottom and, and on the sides are the uh, power jack on this side and on this side the audio jack. The MRX has an audio traffic alert feature. It emits a series of beeps, no voice alert, and you can wire it into your audio panel or use a headset splitter to hear the, alert, uh, the alerts. This portable is called the Monroy ATD 300 traffic watch and it runs only on ship's power, 12 or 24 volts. It's also one of the earlier portables and has been on the market for about eight years. It currently sells for about $595 discounted. It has a detection range of up to five miles and also using this little switch, it can be reduced to improve range resolution for targets that are closer. Like the Xeon models, it also has audio alerting, which is an actual voice alert. This is the jack. The ATD 300 also monitors the aircraft bus voltage, which we think is a nice feature. Last, this product is called the ProxAlert R5, and it can sit on the glare shield or attached to the lip of the shield with these clips. It will operate on 6 to 16 volts, or with the voltage converter, 24 volts. It sells for $795, typically. It will also track multiple targets, and like other models, it has audio alerts, which can be piped into a headset through this jack in the back of the device. The ProxAlert tracks distance, altitude, and trends, but not azimuth. So that's the summary of the products. Let's go give them a flight trial. Above uh, Venice, Florida, we're tracking on a northwesterly heading. Uh, if we look on the TIS, we can see our target aircraft, which is a Piper Tomahawk. It's at uh, 4,000 feet. And at the moment, it's about uh, two miles uh, off in our 11 o'clock, according to the TIS. As you can see, the Prox Alert has it at about two miles at 3,900 feet, which is about 600 feet below us. And the MRX is also tracking it at uh, four miles. The range doesn't quite agree, but as you can see, the range is dithering somewhat. And it's at 600 feet below us. These two devices have pretty much held lock 
Occasionally the MRX will lose a lot, particularly in a turn. The Prox Alert seems to hold it a lot better. We look over on the Monroy. The Monroy has just picked it up at two nautical miles and uh, 600 feet below us. And uh, presently the target is uh, drifting back to about our uh, 9 to 10 o'clock position. We're going to pass off his uh, left wing in a moment. We're turning to a uh, more southeasterly heading. Uh, the Prox Alert has, uh, hasn't reacquired the target. However, the MRX really never lost it. It has uh, 0 0.6 tenths of a mile, which is uh, a little bit optimistic, and 200 feet. Uh, below us, which is about right, more like 100 feet. Look over to the Monroy, it's not tracking at all. It has tracked the target intermittently, uh, but close in, it uh, didn't seem to do too well. Okay, right now we're uh, tracking on a westerly heading uh, directly behind our target aircraft, well less than a mile. Uh, as you can see, the PIS is alerting traffic nearby. Same altitude, far less than a mile. MRX has the traffic at 1.8 miles. It's obviously much closer, but it does have it uh, at the same altitude. Fox Alert R5 is tracking four targets. The closest, of course, is our target aircraft, which it shows at four miles. And uh, let's see, it shows an altitude of 4,500 feet. Uh, obviously, that's not correct. Uh, the devices do seem to... Uh, improve their accuracy the closer they get, but the closer we get, but when they get very close, they sometimes lose track uh, or they report an out uh, distance that's too far. The altitudes seem to be accurate. We're established at 4,500 feet. Our target aircraft is about 700 feet below us. Right now, the TIS indicates that it's in about our 11 o'clock, uh, drifting back towards the 10 o'clock. If we look at the Prox Alert, it doesn't currently have it because the Tomahawk is clocking at 1,200 codes, but it'll come back as we make the turn. The uh, Bayon XRX does have it, and so does the MRX. And uh, as we get into his 6 o'clock, which we are now, we're going to make a turn and follow him and see what these do. That little trouble with the... Fox Alert R5 antenna, it doesn't want to stay vertical. It's supposed to stay vertical, and, and it does make a difference. What you've just seen is a brief summary of one of the four test flights we conducted with the portable traffic minders. Cutting straight to the chase here, which one is the best one? That's not necessarily an easy question to answer for two reasons. One, there's a big price delta between the cheapest and most expensive products. It's more than $1,300. Second, all of them are very inconsistent in performance. Sometimes they see most of the traffic and range it correctly. Sometimes they agree on the range of the traffic they do see. Sometimes they don't see any of it, or one will see something the others miss. And by the way, we found this to be also true of the panel mount traffic systems, some of which cost 20 times more than these little gadgets. We'll have more to say on that later. In the meantime, in our opinion, the best bang for the buck is Zeon's MRX. It's easy to use. It did an impressive job of tracking targets, even if the range wasn't always ac accurate. Next up is the Prox Alert R5. It tracked a little better than the MRX, but it costs more and it won't run on batteries. It's also more complicated to use. Its best feature is the ability to track and display multiple targets. Our third choice is the Xeon XRX. I have to say we were impressed with how well it tracked azimuth. It was basically never wrong on target detection or direction. It did tend to drop targets a little bit more than the MRX did, and we found the LCD screen hard to read in direct sunlight. We'll reserve final judgment on the XRX until we've used it to display traffic on a Garmin 396. That capability looks promising to us, and if azimuth is important to you, the XRX is a good pick. Last, the Monroy uh, ATD 300. We like the small, low-profile design and the bright LED display, but in the end, it didn't track as well as the other products, so it would be our last choice. If you'd like more detailed information on our trials, check out Aviation Consumer at www.aviationconsumer.com. I'm Paul Bertarelli, and thanks for watching AvWeb and for using Aviation Consumer Video.